Well, I'm turning 30 this week. Yes, the big 3-0. And I'm so excited. I mean, it's been a great 30 years, but at times it can be stressful. But don't worry, there's coffee because adulting is hard. Oh, is there anything that says adulting more than turning 30? Guys, I'm 30. I feel so young, but I feel so old all at the same time. And yes, adulting, that is an actual word. It's a verb that means as to act or behave in an adult manner and engage in activities associated with being an adult. <laughs> And it wasn't even a word until it was used in a tweet in 2008, and now it's part of our everyday language. Like we use it all the time, adulting this, adulting that. And there's even been best-selling books about this and classes. You can go to classes about adulting. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. But there is a thing about growing up and becoming an adult, right? Like you gotta get a job, pay rent or your mortgage, do your own taxes. You're being the boss of someone, like if you, especially if you have little kids running around, budgeting, paying your bills, on time, not asking mom or dad to bail you out of debt. This is all being an adult. And it reminds me of the meme I saw that when you're sick, it says that moment when you want your mom, but you realize you're the mom and no one cares. Hashtag truth God, hurts, hurts. But I asked some of you to share your thoughts of your own breakthroughs or even breakdowns in being an adult. And here's what you had to say. Lauren says, sometimes it's hard enough getting myself up and ready, let alone two other tiny humans. Amen, sister. That was me this morning. Ashley says, yesterday I said adulting was hard because I never take me out of the freezer early enough. Oh, Ashley, it happens to me at least once a week. Marianne says, I felt like a real adult when I paid my six month premium for car insurance all at once. That's a breakthrough. You are officially an adult, Marianne. Oh, you guys, I love those so much because what it is, is it's reality. It's so true, right? Now, one of the most adulting things that you could ever do is get a job. Look, it's a fact. Unless you win the lottery or something like that, at some point, you're going to have to get a job. But I don't want you to just settle for any job. I want you to get one that you love. Of course, that can be challenging, but it can be done. So I asked my good friend, Ken Coleman, to join us to lay down some wisdom and create an action plan for getting the job that you love. He is a best-selling author, host of The Ken Coleman Show on Sirius XM, and one of our Ramsey personalities, and a good friend of mine. Please welcome Ken Coleman. Yes, hey. happy birthday, yeah. Rachel. The big 3-0. Oh, do these people know you're turning 30? Oh, they do. Well, I wasn't I about to come on your show <laughs> and not celebrate you, so there it is. Look at that. I did not make it. It uh, looks delicious. The crew brought, brought this, bought this, brought this. So there you go. And look at this. I I'm believe, right I here. believe you I'm did. getting it on my fingers. Is, is it, it good? rude to lick your finger? Is it good? Okay, look what I did. I've got two forks, so mm. if you want to try it, I don't know, it's up to you. So there you go. I like the purple hat. Give it a try. Yeah, oh, you like go. the party hat? You know, I'm actually not a sweet tooth. Are you a salt? Oh, no. Oh, boy, it's on the furniture. It's getting bad. It's getting oh, bad. Oh, my gosh, it's on it. the furniture. I'm going to stop it. Okay. Well, Ken, thanks for being here. Well, I'm thrilled to be here. I surprised you, didn't I? You did surprise me. Yeah. Just, I thought it was the least I could do. you in the glory of the party hat and the cake. So. All right, one thing. You're turning 30. I am. Uh, people want to know. I know they do. So before you start asking me questions, are you dying the hair yet? Are you seeing any early grays? Because oh, I don't see any grays right now. Oh my gosh. Are the you? grays are in in full force. But they're not there. Yes, I know. When I did you color? color? A year and a half ago when I was like 28 and a half. <laughs> 28 so and a half. so bad. I mean, oh, people bless your heart. There, you know, you know. All right, well, this was a great gift. So. All right, so this is great fun. So we'll eat this later because we're going to have to run this off. All Lindsay, right. can you come get this lovely birthday cake? Oh, and the party hat. Here, oh, I'll give get, you that. There we go. There we so, go. Oh, you're so awesome. Lindsay. What a great gift. How about Ken? that? Thank you. Well, there you go. Seriously. It's all about adding value. I think even a better gift, though, <laughs> is if you tell everyone who's watching how they can find a job yeah. that they love. And you have some great tips because you are, you're an expert in this yeah. area. Where you wanna start is you need to find out who you are. How were you wired? Mm -hmm. I believe that everyone was created with two distinct elements that allow you to find the work that you love and do it your whole life. Those two elements are first, your talents, strengths, 
skills. Okay. All the same word, but these are things that you do better than anything else. And then we wanna look at passions. This is what I love to do more than anything else. Mm -hmm. So we call it on the Ken Coleman Show, the sweet spot. It's where you're able to use your top skills to do the work that matters most to you, the work that gives you joy. You see time begin to disappear. You can't believe that two or three hours have passed by. Yeah. So we start there. And once we figure that out, then we can look within the sweet spot for multiple roles. Mm -hmm. So you can actually have two, three, four jobs within a career that are all technically dream work, but you're gonna move up the ladder. But the first step is, Find that sweet spot where your talent and your passion intersect. That's good. And then it's all about searching for the dream job, right? Well, Finding that, it. That's it. Once you get an idea of what the roles are, now we're going to pursue this, yeah, but only after we put a plan together. So we don't want you to just willy-nilly pursue because that can lead to a lot of frustration. Let's yeah. talk about the plan. A couple questions that you can ask that'll help you come up with a plan. The first is, what do I need to learn? Now that I know what I want to do, so yes. let's just say that you want to be a teacher. Well, what is going to be required? Where do I want to teach? Well, obviously, I need a, a degree. It's like the tactical elements This of is it. tactical. Yeah, that's good. What do I need to learn? Then, who do I need to know? You've heard the classic phrase. It's not attributed to anybody, so I'm going to steal it today. It's not what you know. It's, it's who you know. You know. And, and how really true, true is that, though? It's really true. Those relationships that you build in life. That's right. Those are the people that take you to the next Absolutely. step. Absolutely, I mean, it'll, it'll take you to the top of the resume pile. Yeah, It's about who you know. So first question, okay, what do I need to learn? What qualifications am I gonna need? Yep. Who do I need to know? Now two very practical questions. How long is it gonna take? Mm -hmm. How much is it gonna cost? These are questions that the plan gets super specific there because we go, oh, if I gotta get a degree, well, can I afford it? I'm gonna cash flow it, so it may take me six years. Yep. And so that's where we get super specific on the plan before we just strike out. So good, and you also say, I love this, pursue on purpose. Yeah. Okay, so tell me about that. Yeah, so I like to- It's uh, very catchy, by the way. It is, and here's another catchy little thing. We call it the proximity principle. Oh, the prox lots of You like that? Here. Love, love the alliteration. <laughs> yeah. So the, the proximity principle says this, in order to do what I want to do, Rachel, I've got to be around people that are doing it mm -hmm. and be in places where it is happening. People so, in places. That's it. So the idea is, let's just say we're on a TV set right now. Let's say you want to get into the television industry. Yep. That looks really intimidating. Yep. You think Los Angeles, New York, I don't know anybody. How am I going to make connections? Well, here's the deal. In those early days, you want to just say, hey, can I hang out on the set? Mm -hmm. Can I volunteer? Can I bring the apples and the grapes and the bottled water? Can I just volunteer, do grunt work? Uh, be a production assistant, lowest level, and then work your way up. That's proximity because you're around people that are doing the work you want to do, and you're in places where it's happening. Here's what happens there. Two things, experience and relationships. Yes. That happens there in proximity. You won't believe the doors that will open up for you. And then that kind of leads into your last point too, right? Like get in the right place. Yeah, so once you're there, yes. stay in the right place. And most people, Rachel, I in the same way. I, I get tempted by this all the time. I always want progress to happen faster. Right. Happen right. now, happen now, happen now, happen now. And the reality is if I get in the right place with that proximity principle and I stay there, mm -hmm. the right time will take care of itself. Yes. So you only need to worry about getting in the right place. When you're there, you will find that opportunities will seek you out. And here's the best part. You're ready. You're there. So I wouldn't worry about the right so timing. Good. Yes. I worry about the right Because place. the hard thing is a lot of people, they just want like the outcome, right? Sure. Like the dream yeah. outcome is like, I just want to get here. But it takes so yeah. much. I mean, even like with this show, like I started out with video oh, blogs yeah. with a flip camera and yes. a tripod that I did myself. And I would go on my MacBook Air and edit the video. Yes. <laughs> and then slowly like we got views and then we kind of grew a That's little right. team. And then we grew into like our video blogs and then it turned into this. Well, you're so, 30 years now, old. Now this would be awesome to have had six, seven years ago, eight years ago when I started, but that's not reality. Well, you also weren't ready. Yes. You you wouldn't have been able to do this show yep. at the quality level and the credibility level for the audience to go, hey, I'm receiving what Rachel is teaching and sharing, and more importantly, what she's modeling, if you hadn't had that seasoning, that experience. And yeah. I'll just say this to encourage people. I started out, okay, not on Sirius XM, mm -hmm. hosting my own show, or filling in for Dave Ramsey on the third largest show in America. I started out doing high school football play-by-play -play on the internet. So Two good. people were so listening. Good. The guy next to me and my wife, because she's a good woman. <laughs> so, I mean, you gotta start somewhere. Don't overlook and don't look down on yes. the humble beginning. It's so true, and it just prepares you for the for the dream, right? I love it. So good, Ken. We just come back, like, all the time. Oh my gosh, anytime. <laughs>
Anytime. I won't bring cake every time. Oh, I think more. that's too high of that's an expectation. Okay. Is that okay. cool? Oh, yes. right. I'd love to come back. Yes, good, good. Well, if you guys have any more questions about your dream job, you have to check out Ken's Daily Radio Show on Sirius, XM, or wherever podcasts are. Now, one of the things that you want when you're dressing up for your dream job is to dress appropriately. So as I leave my 20s behind, I just wondered if I should tweak my wardrobe a bit to head into a new decade. So I reached out to my friend and stylist, Amanda Sears, for some tips as my style grows up. You love clothes, kid. I You're love, gonna love this. I love clothes, You're but you know what else this. I love? Birthday cake. Let's go eat some. Yeah, it's good. Hey, everyone. This is Amanda Sears. <laughs> she helps me with my clothes. Like when I'm out speaking or I'm doing TV stuff, she's the expert that I look to. So I brought her in today, Amanda. Thanks yes. for being here. So excited to be in your closet. So fun, so fun. So I don't know if you've heard, but I'm turning 30. Not old, very not a big old, deal. Very old, <laughs> okay. very old. Okay, so I want to take my wardrobe from like the 20s, right? Okay. Not okay. the decade, the 20s. My age, the 20s. And really, like, mature myself, right? And I really want to say, okay, you, I want you to look to my closet right now, and I want you to say, Rachel, here are things that are just too youthful. And hopefully okay. good tips for you guys that are in your 30s and 40s, or if you're in your 20s and you want to dress a little bit more mature, these are going to be helpful tips. Okay. okay. So, okay. <sighs> first being of all, very vulnerable right now. You're going to go through and tell me what's horrible, and I'm really excited. So go. Deep breaths, your 30s, are, <laughs> your life is not over. It's just starting. No matter what age you are, it is all about being comfortable in your own skin. If you are a 60 or a 70 year old woman and you've worn a leather biker jacket your whole life, you just like keep wearing it, you know? I love it. Just I like own it. who you are. So having said that, uh, there are a few things that I think you should just kind of be aware of. The first thing I noticed is this mm -hmm. right here. Oh, yeah, um, about it. So yes, it's, it's very cute. And we all know like ruffles are a huge trend right now. And that's a great <laughs> ruffle. That's a great ruffle. I'm not telling you to take it off. <laughs> oh, ruffles can also skew as being very like little girlish. You know, you see yeah. them a lot on little girls' clothes. Yep. So as you kind of like um, are shopping, you want to be more aware of where they're placed okay. and kind of the fabrication. So you want something more sculptural, not so frilly or fluffy. Okay, Think of it as being go. more, maybe more dramatic, okay. but also a little more graceful. Because even like um, the sleeves that go out, right? Like Yeah, and, and yeah. a lot of that comes down to just like a better quality of fabric. Okay. That makes a huge difference in okay. how the fabric drapes off of the body. Of, be aware of the ruffles, um, okay. Be, beware of the ruffle. Another um, area that can be a little bit dicey is sometimes with color. <laughs> So we have this like <clears throat> lovely uh, neon, highlighter. I guess we'll call this, yeah, highlighter pink. <laughs> and I think that as you come into your 30s, coming a little bit later, I think that these like electric, like neon mm -hmm. colors can just be a little more challenging to wear. Yep. Um, you know, your skin pigment actually kind of changes as you get older. Mm -hmm. So these kind of colors just can be a little more harsh. Okay. So going with something just a little bit softer. I'm gonna put it back. Okay. <laughs> It, yeah, may be, it, it may back. be gone later. You'll be able to find it in there if you need it again. Okay, any other tips that you can think of? My last tip that I have for you, you might not think about this, but not only can people dress too young, you can also dress too old. Mm -hmm. And um, you, I am turning 30. I know, but you're not a Mima yet. <laughs> That's right, I'm not. So sometimes <laughs> I go into closets and I do see things that are just too old for people. You like know, they're what? Like, like frumpy sweaters? Yeah, frumpy like, sweaters. And it's, a lot of it comes down to like fabrication, like okay. bad fabrics or cuts of okay. things. Yes. So just being aware of that kind of thing. A little bit um, more slimming cuts. Yes, yes, cuts. you know, just just be aware. Okay, that's good. So. <laughs> okay, so go through, yes. and I want okay. to know like what are like good things to be like, yes, things this is, to, these you are should be doing. mature like clothes. Yes. This is good. Find pieces that you can invest in. You have a great pair of page jeans. Yes. And um, if you have a denim-centric lifestyle, you know, if you're able to wear jeans to work, if you're running around with the kids mm -hmm. and you are wearing jeans on an almost daily basis, like go ahead and make the investment in a good pair of denim. Good, so, okay, I love having that. having a good investment. Another piece of clothing that I really like is a great oh, yes. jumpsuit. <laughs> Okay. Super cute. And I'd say to all you out there, I did not, she helped me with this one. I would not have just like bought a jumpsuit off the rack. So some people may see this probably like me and be like, oh my gosh, I so, don't know if I could do that. So like, what's like your you rule can, of thumb with You this? can kind of think of the jumpsuit as being like, 
the little black dress or like the little sheath dress that kind of like is completely classic and goes with everything. It's good. But the jumpsuit, because it's pants, it's a little more playful. It's still sophisticated. You know, you can put a great jacket over it and wear it to work. You can take it off and add some great jewelry and wear it out. Love it. Okay. okay. The last thing is um, <clears throat> adding like a layering piece to okay. your look. Okay. Anytime you can add like a great jacket or a cardigan, I think it just tends to elevate your look. It really pulls things together. Mm -hmm. Just taking the time to like throw on a third piece can really elevate your look. And this is like from Zara. I remember I got this. Yeah. I was out speaking in like Chicago or something, and it was like $19.99. But it look, I mean, it feels but great. It's great. It looks, Zara's looks great. Expensive. So if you're ever in a big city yes. and there's a Zara, go mm -hmm. to it. And the Highly page recommend. jeans were like from Nordstrom. So come to Nashville. Like, oh, please, Zara. Zara come, come, come to Nashville. Come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, works. so what I want yeah. you to do now for yes. me, so like a lot of you out there, I'm working during the day, and okay, then at right. night, it's like, okay, I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna go meet girlfriends out, right. while Winston okay. and I are going to dinner. Okay. So I want you to put together an outfit okay. that they can duplicate at home. Okay, to say, okay really here, easy. Here's a good go-to piece you can wear to work, mm -hmm. but also can transition okay. the magic yes. into yes. night. Like Wonder Woman, you spin around it, and you're ready it. to go. Okay. okay, we'll just start with this great pair of investment jeans that you have. Love it. Love it. And then let's find, this is a really pretty, got a really pretty silk blouse here. From Ann Taylor. Ann Taylor. So for work, just to keep it, you know, very professional, we'll and throw this. I'm just throwing names out there. Oh, yeah. Not to get sponsors or free stuff, anyone. I'm just telling <laughs> no, you, no. you. So this is Gianni, okay, so this is a Dillard's brand. Mm -hmm. This is so a this Dillard's is from brand. Dillard's. Just FYI. I would mm. probably recommend, I don't know if you can see everything here. Um, I would recommend tucking, doing a full tuck in with this so it's okay. nice and clean for work with a great belt. Okay. And then just a nice pair of heels. The ones that you have on are perfect, kind of a nice um, suede color. It's yoga and styling. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, jewelry. jewelry. Oh, yeah, you yeah, have yeah, to yeah. have jewelry. Yes. Do not leave the house without it. I would just do like this little delicate, like a nice pendant necklace. Okay. Jewelry simple. is like the punctuation on your outfit, okay? Is if that there's a one thing that I want people one. to do is wear more jewelry and accessories. Jewelry, I'll tell Winston. It makes it look like you try. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you're finished with your work day and yeah. Going out. You're Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman around the bathroom. That's not a word, <laughs> sorry. It is. Um, okay, so you've still got on your jeans. We're gonna lose the blazer and maybe we're gonna switch the shoes up. Love this. Mm, those are Fabulous cool. white pump, also very on trend. These are Sam Edelman, super comfortable, yes, I might add. Throw this on the bottom with the jeans. A little pricey, but worth it. Unbutton just a little, like one one more button <laughs> since you're going out date night or uh, out ladies' on the night. Town. Out on the town. And then um, I would also do, so we remember we tucked in to keep it clean for work. Yep. There's something that's called like the editor's tuck or the yep. half tuck. So kind of you kind of like untuck the back and just leave the front kind of tucked in right by the buckle. Love it. Makes it kind of like I call it studied casual. And then totally natural. Pull out of your bag a fabulous <laughs> statement earring. So we have these white ones. So, so a just fun a fun earring. And fun, take the pendant off. Take the pendant off and wear a big fun earring. I'm actually gonna just wear right. all of this okay. tomorrow to work. <laughs> and I'm like, when just hang it all? You gotta take me out to dinner so I can Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Go ahead, take me on a date. Okay, Amanda, so helpful. Seriously, I love it. I mean, because it's so easy, and you always say that it's, you, you can dress yourself mm -hmm. inexpensively, but Absolutely. classy. Absolutely. I believe you can shop anywhere on any budget. It's just about making the best choices. Amanda, thank you. You're thank welcome. you, thank you, thank, thank you for you. coming. Thank you so much. And hopefully you'll come back. I'd love to. Yes, so okay. great. Oh, that was so much fun. I love clothes. And I feel like I'm in business attire right now for this show. I'm learning from Amanda. But one of the things that is very adult-like that a lot of us do is buying a home. I read a stat the other day that millennials are living at home longer and buying houses later. And I've even heard from some of you guys in my Facebook group all around home buying, asking all these questions. So we brought in real estate expert, Christy Harrison, to answer those questions for you. Christy, welcome. Thank Thanks you. for being here. She was on, on another episode and you were just so great. Well, Seriously. I'm so glad to be back. I got all these questions about home buying. I was like, we gotta get Christy back in here. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Okay, so when you think of someone and think, okay, are they ready to buy a home? Are they in the adult position to do it? What are some of the tips that you have to make sure someone is ready to buy a home? 
Well, I think if we're talking about it from the financial aspect, they want to make sure they have enough money saved for their down payment. They want to make sure that they have that money ready to go. In most places, it's very competitive right now with home buying. So definitely want to have that down payment. The next thing, they want to look at their budget, make sure they've allocated or have less than 30% of their take-home pay allocated for this monthly payment. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people only think about the monthly payment, but it's taxes, utilities, it's insurance. And if they buy in a neighborhood that has an HOA, sometimes that's a monthly fee that can range from anywhere from $100 to $500 a month. So they need to take that in consideration. Yes. Oh, you're preaching to the choir, Christy. <laughs> Seriously, we do our budget every month in our HOA. I think it's like once a quarter. Mm-hmm. So I really never budget it. And then it comes up in every dollar and I'm like, dang it. <laughs> I'm exactly. like, man, it sneaks up on you. It There's just up. so much when it comes to home buying. So, mm-hmm. but the better prepared you are, the easier the transition is going to be. And the more you're going to probably love your house. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Okay. So some of the questions you guys asked. Julie asks, my husband and I would love to buy in a popular area that's walking distance, you know, within restaurants and coffee shops, but it's within a few miles of an unsafe area. My parents' advice is to live more in the suburbs. So what are your thoughts on home buying in the city versus suburbs? Well, first I'd say to Julie, you know, that's a great question. You have to kind of decide which one makes the most sense for you, your commute to work, et cetera. Um, But as a realtor, we normally can't answer the question about whether a neighborhood is safe or unsafe. Oh, interesting. But a great resource for people is to go to their city.gov website. So normally in every area, there's a city, whatever your city is, .gov website. On there, they measure things like the crime report, and you can see it's public information. They also have on there like renters versus buyers in a community. And they may even have a walkability score. So that's a great resource for her to check out. Oh, that's good. And really, it's your preference, right? Your I mean, preference. like some people feel unsafe next to a Whole Foods <laughs> or like whatever the situation is. Yeah, exactly. And, and I would say too, Julie, that, you know, part of growing up and, and being an adult is valuing your parents' opinion because they're older than you and wiser for sure. But it's figuring out what's right for you and your husband. Like, this is your life. And so decide what it is. So make that checklist for what's important for your house. So just like you're saying, location. You know, Winston and I were talking about even like our family. If it continues to grow, it's like, okay, how many bedrooms are going to need? Are people going to have to share? How many bathrooms? I mean, there's just so much that goes in. So make sure you're figuring out what's best for you. Our next question is from Carrie. And she asks, first time home buyer here raising her hands. I'm unsure of what's involved within foreclosed homes. Why are they cheaper? Are there any red lights for purchasing one? Well, Carrie, that's a great question, but I'll tell you, um, normally with a foreclosed property, what they're basically saying is this one has been owned or is taken over by a bank of some sort. And because of that, they don't have certain disclosures that may tell you what happened in this home previously. So a lot of times when you're purchasing a foreclosure home, you have to do your additional due diligence to make sure that everything with the pipes, the utilities, um, the upkeep of the home, any deferred maintenance has been taken care of before you decide to bid on that particular house. So normally- Do your due diligence, Do really. your due diligence. Yes, um, sure. But there's no you know, bad thing about buying one if yeah. you've done your due diligence ahead of time. And I was raised in a real estate family title insurance absolutely are you impressed i am so impressed get title insurance that's a big one (laughs) so great impressed all right carla asks i live in an area where housing is quite expensive as a single woman it will take around seven years to save up a down payment to keep the mortgage at 25 percent of my take-home pay where's the best place to put the money as i'm saving Well, you know, I would say she might want to look and see if there are some places around where she's staying now that may not be as expensive. But when it comes to investing, that's you're the expert on that. (laughs) Well, yeah, I would say as you're saving up for that down payment, a great place is just a simple money market account. So really the big rule of thumb here is you don't want to invest this money because you're going to get out within five to seven years, you were saying. So you want it to be liquid, is what we say, where you can get it out quickly. So a money market account is just a great place to put it. You can find that at local banks. It's pretty easy. So yeah, that's exactly exactly what I would say. But for all of you out there who are saving up for a down payment, make sure you download my new fun tool called House Down Payment Goal Tracker, where you can actually fill in the progress as you save money. So click the link in the description below to get that. And to find a high quality, amazing, 
fun, wonderful agent in your area like Chrissy, go to rachelcruz.com and click the recommends tab and you can find one today. Because at the end of the day, you guys, you wanna find someone that you trust when it comes to home buying and home selling and someone that's more concerned about your bank account than theirs. So Chrissy, thank you so much for being on. Thank you. Sorry, always great, helpful information. Wonderful. All right, confession time. I am terrible at buying gifts. Like the worst. I'm if I if it's someone's birthday, I'm like, okay, I want to get you something great, but I don't know what to get you. And I've learned that part of growing up means that you're intentional. So I really, really do want to give people great gifts because when I get gifts that are very thoughtful, I love it so much. So I've been wanting to do better. I did a little research and put together a $20 gift guide that won't break the bank. Because if you're like me, you have all different types of friends. So here's a gift idea for each type of friend. For your fashionable friends, you can get a book, The Curated Closet. It's amazing. Or these really adorable earrings from Target. Target, 12 bucks. For your foodie friend, you can get them a magazine subscription to Food and Wine, Food Network, Rachel Ray, Cooking Light, Bon Appetit. You know, those are anywhere from five to $20. This is $12 a year. Or the bamboo cutting board. And this one is the obsessive chef. So it's measured out so they can chop everything just perfectly. That is so not me, but if that's your friend, get this for them, it's pretty cool. And this is $22, so $2 over budget, but we'll just take that out of our grocery envelope. And for your creative friends, a monthly subscription to Skillshare. Okay, really, this is awesome. So it's online, all these classes from graphic design, writing, hand lettering, photography for 15 bucks a month. It's a great gift. Or you can get them this cute little case that they can carry around all their art supplies, paintbrushes, and I'm not, creative, so I don't know what else would go in here. Artist stuff. And for your book club friends, you can get them library candles. These are actually really cute. $20 and it's like old authors. So this one is the Jane Austen scent. It's wonderful. Or you can get them a bookmark or maybe a book that they've been wanting to read. It's for your work friends. If they travel a lot, stylish luggage tags. Oh, this is so cute, $15. Or you can get this great water bottle, $14. And what's even fun about this is you can put fruit in the center, like cucumbers and have cucumber water, like you're at the spa. But you're not at the spa, you're at work. But you feel like you're at the spa, great gift. Or you can go in with all your other friends and buy a more expensive gift, like if they've been wanting to go to the spa, maybe they want a bike, I don't know. But you can go in, buy something big. So remember to stay on budget and only buy gifts that you can afford. And for my birthday, I had to do this. I had to save up for a trip with my friends. That's right, for my big 3-0, jetting out of town with some friends and we're going to Las Vegas. <gasps> Now you might be thinking, Rachel, are you a big gambler? Nope. Are you a big partier? Nope. But Rachel, do you love Britney Spears? Yup. <laughs> That's right. B Spears motivated this whole trip. Yes, she did. She may never know it, but she did. My friends, Annie, Christy, and I, we were all talking last year about how we wanted to go see Britney Spears in concert, and she was in Vegas. But at the time, I was like super pregnant. And I was like, y'all, I can't be jamming to B Spears when I'm seven months pregnant. No, no, we gotta wait till after I have this baby. But then we found out in December that Britney is no longer in Vegas. Her last show was on New Year's Eve. So our hearts broke, but we thought, you know what? We could still do this. Like this could still be really fun. So we booked tickets to Circus Soleil and Elton John, and we had a third night available. And I suggested that we could go see the ventriloquist that won America's Got Talent, because he has his own show. And you would have thought that I suggested that like, we cancel the trip altogether. They were so like, wait, what? No, we are not gonna go see a French Quest in Las Vegas. I thought it was a fun idea. But yeah, we are heading out of town, you guys, and I'm so excited about it. But here was the deal. I sat down with Winston and we're like, okay, let's look at our money, let's look at our time frame, our calendars, get this lined up well so we're not stressed you know, when the time comes. And so what we did financially was so smart. So we started saving up in November and December 
when I still thought B Spears was playing, and she wasn't. But when it came January, we booked our plane tickets. And then in February is when I booked the hotel, and you just put a deposit down for hotel, and then I bought the concert tickets. And so all of that together spread out with the money we saved. It was beautiful, and it worked. It was great. It was that moment of like, oh, saving money feels good especially when you get to spend it. So now I wanna share some of the things that you guys have been working hard to save money for. That's right, she works hard, saving money is here. So remember, use the hashtag when you're posting stuff on social media, she works hard saving money, so we can celebrate together. All right, Michelle says, we are saving up to upgrade our family's vehicle, planning to buy in November. Well done, Michelle, so smart. Amanda says, our daughter's braces paid in full. How fun. Oh, Amanda, she's gonna thank you so much later in life. What a gift. Denise says, we saved up for a road trip from Nebraska to Disneyland last summer, and it was the best. Kelly says, a lovely new bathroom so I can relax in style. Oh, these are so good. Oh, and you guys, I'm just in the birthday gift spirit. So my birthday gift to you guys, Michelle, Amanda, Denise, and Kelly, I'm going to give each one of you one of the gifts that I talked about in the gift guide. So enjoy. Remember you guys, use the hashtag, she works hard saving money because you never know what kind of fun we're going to have with them. Well, this was such a great show. Thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, adulting is even easier than you think. So thank you to Ken Coleman and Christy for coming out. And for all the things that we talked about in this episode, make sure to click the link in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, take control of your money and create a life you love.